Hello everyone, and welcome back to AP World History Essay Writing DBQ. And today we're going to learn about sourcing the documents. Your previous module was about using the documents, utilizing that content within each document, and explaining that information that's been given. But with sourcing the documents, it's a little bit different. There are similarities, but it is different. Just like you utilize the content of all seven of the documents, you must source all seven documents um, as evidence in support of your thesis. And it's necessary to explain the relevance of the author's point of view, purpose, historical content, their intended audience, as well as the format to demonstrate an understanding of the significance of that source. And this will provide a stronger interpretation of the documents when you use them as evidence. It's also necessary to evaluate the usefulness, reliability, and or the limitations of the source when you're answering particular historical questions. And each document should have a sourcing statement, just like each document had an explanation statement. And when, hopefully you remember from your, um, your format module, when you use the documents within your body paragraphs, you want to keep the documents together. So for example, let's say you've grouped documents 1, 4, and 5 together to support your first answer in your first body paragraph. Well, when you use document 1, you want to utilize the content within that document, and then you want to source document 1. Then you'd want to explain what's in document 4, and then source document 4. And then explain what's in document 5, and source what's in document 5. So that's how each document should have its own sourcing statement, just like you've provided an explanation statement for each document. Okay, when you source documents, there are some questions that you need to keep in mind and that you need to ask yourself and try and, and at least make an attempt to answer to help you source the documents. One, what is the question we are responding to? Uh, which historical thinking skills, themes, concepts will help you answer that question? Two, what is the historical context shaping the issues in the question? So which of the key concepts can help us understand the larger historical context here? How does this fit into the global process? Three, what is the author's point of view? So how does the author's background, like their culture, political views, religion, social status, gender, occupation, likely to affect the way the author views the issue and context addressed in the question? For example, keep in mind that an American might interpret a scenario far differently than an Asian. A male might interpret a scenario far differently than a female. A Hindu might interpret a scenario far differently than a Muslim. A government official might interpret a scenario far differently than a slave. A nobleman might interpret a scenario far differently than a merchant. So the background, the religion, the social status, occupation, all of that influences people when they create different things that could that are later used as documents to support something or as evidence of something um, and so those are a significant part of sourcing the document four what is the relationship between the author and the event and how might this relationship influence the author's point of view and does that relationship make the source more or less credible so, let's see. Five. Who is the intended audience? How did their background affect the author's approach to the issue? Right? Um, someone might take this piece of information that they want to write about and might explain it differently to a group of common people than they would the elites. Six. What did the author hope to, or excuse me, hope the audience would think, feel, or do in response to the documents? Now, what were the author's intentions for this document? Something to keep in mind. And lastly, number seven, what is the format or medium of the document? This is also more important than what most people give it credit for. Is it a poem? Is it a news article? Is it a personal letter? 
a government document, a non-fictional piece of literature. There are many different formats or mediums that a document um, can be presented in, and that also has bearing on what the document means. Okay, and here's an acronym to help you source your documents. So you've, given, you've been given this document, and within your body paragraph, you've utilized the content, and you've explained what this information means. Now, when you go to source that document, a great acronym to use is soapstone. Okay, what's the subject, right, or maybe the theme, um, the occasion, the audience, the purpose, the speaker, and the tone, okay, or the point of view. And this ha really helps with your interpretation and, as well as the credibility of the source. So... As you go through your document, and you can jot notes about each one of these for each particular document, then you can take that information and you could put it into a sourcing statement. You could put it into um, a sentence that not only sources the document, but also provides additional evidence to make your argument stronger. And that is the conclusion of sourcing the documents. I will see you guys again for the next module. And again, email me if you have any questions.